The keto diet, the paleo diet, the Atkins diet. There are many low carb or carbohydrate monitoring diets on the market that in one way or another advertise weight loss through carbohydrate reduction. If you follow this channel, you've already seen my video on how beneficial carbs are for your health and why you shouldn't cut them out of your diet completely. But when your intake of carbs is excessive and you want to limit it, these diets are the right place to go. In moderation, as always. So let's take a look at the differences between the most popular low-carb diets out there. Hello! Welcome to Your Health Grid, the channel where you determine your health progress by understanding what you put in your body. Today's topic is low-carb diets. How do you determine which one to choose? They all consist of low-carb eating habits, but what makes them unique? Let's take a look. First of all, why do people praise low-carb diets and carb-moderating diets? For people wanting to lose weight quickly, it's a great approach. Limiting your carb intake in the short term has weight loss effects because low-carb diets act to rid excess water from your body. However, in the long term, it has insignificant results. After about six months, the weight loss experienced is the same as that of any normal diet, and you can even start to experience negative effects from limited carb intake. Researchers concluded that the people who ate the least amount of carbs had the highest risk of death from cardiovascular disease, stroke, and cancer. So if you were to take any advice from this video, it would be that low-carb diets are great for short-term progress, but not for long-term sustainment. With that being said, let's look into the first diet on our list. The basic low-carb diet doesn't have any strict guidelines, but generally, eating 50 grams to 100 grams of carbs a day is considered participating in the low-carb diet. Considering the recommended daily intake for carbs is 225 grams to 325 grams, it's understandably a noticeable change of pace, and even more so for people who exceed the daily value of carbs in their regular diet. But the basic low-carb diet isn't about matching those numbers, it's only about eating fewer carbs than is normal for you. And whether that's more or less than those numbers is up to you. The basic low-carb diet also gives you the freedom to choose which carbs you can eat to reach your goal. If you're looking for a more lenient plan with more freedom, this would be the best plan for you. Next is the keto diet. And in stark contrast to the basic low-carb diet, it's highly restrictive. It limits you to eating food that altogether falls under 20 to 30 grams of carbs a day. In turn, you'll be eating a significant amount of fat to counteract the inevitable energy loss from the decreased carb intake. Up to 80% of your diet will become fats. The keto diet's goal is to shift your energy production from one that relies on carbs for energy to one that creates its own form of energy in the form of ketones. The diet consists mainly of fat, a little protein, and non-starchy vegetables and fruits, so it's very difficult to maintain and not recommended for long-term use unless you alter it significantly. The keto diet is recommended for people who want drastic weight loss and have the discipline to maintain it, but once again, it's not recommended unless the diet itself is altered. Next on our list is the paleo diet. This diet focuses on eating fat and protein with fewer carbs. The number of carbs you intake daily can range from the 20 gram keto diet level to the normal daily carb intake value. The main emphasis is on eating whole, unprocessed foods and vegetables that naturally fall lower on the carb spectrum. The limited research on the paleo diet suggests that it helps you lose weight, reduce belly fat, and lower blood pressure. However, there aren't enough studies on it to have a conclusive understanding of it. This diet is great for people who require a very lenient approach, but it can be overwhelming for some people who have a more plant-based diet naturally. And lastly is the Atkins diet. This diet supposedly started the trend of low-carb dieting. With this diet, you start with a ketogenic carb intake and gradually start adding carb sources like vegetables and fruit. During this phase, you'll want to avoid adding carbs to the diet 
as this can cause weight gain and relapse. This diet is probably the most effective of all the diets, once again in the short term. If you're looking for a milestone-based diet to keep you motivated, the Atkins diet is the one for you. That concludes our list of the differences between the most effective low-carb diets on the market. As you can see, each diet is tailored to your needs and it's up to you to pick which one suits your goals the best. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got something out of it. I have more educational videos available for your consumption on the screen. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know what else you would like to learn about in the comments. I read every single one. See you later.